Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Soul Man and Friends Surgery this morning. It gives me the greatest pleasure to welcome Susan Watson for our very last session. We've been doing this for three weeks, 15 days, right throughout the whole of lockdown. And honestly, Susan, see the feedback that I have had from people. It's really, really helping people so, so much. Um, your last video had 80 views, I think, um, on the one day, and it's getting more and more and more every day. So what you're doing for people, Susan, is you're really, really helping people. So I want to say from myself and from everybody in the Soul Man and Friends community, a huge big thank you to you for spending time with me every Monday and Friday. And I didn't get to see you till January, so I'm a bit raging, but never mind. <laughs> so <laughs> um, we are talking today about the vagus nerve. So Susan, before you put your little thing in a padded envelope and send it to me in the post for tomorrow morning, first class recorded delivery, I'll let you show everybody <laughs> and let you talk about what the vagus nerve is. Thank you very much, Stephen. It's always a joy to be here. Have a little bit of banter before we start. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start off just very briefly to talk about a little bit about trauma because that ties in with the vagus nerve as well. So generally people think that trauma is linked. Trauma is the event. Whatever happened in your life is the trauma. It's not necessarily the case. In fact, it isn't the case. Trauma is actually the body and the mind, what the actual event does to you. So when I see people coming along to me and they're touching on events that have happened in the past um, and they'll say things to me like, I don't know why I feel this way. People have had much worse experiences or I don't know why I feel and act this way because I, I've heard about people that have had things so much worse. Well, that might be the case as the event, you're perceiving their events as worse, but the trauma is you and your body how that event impacted you. Where two people can go through exactly the same events, exactly the same occurrences, no difference at all. One person might think about it and process it for a couple of weeks and then can leave it and move on with their life and have that happy life that they deserve. Someone else can just get stuck in that moment. It hasn't closed off, it's not getting processes, so that's almost like reliving it constantly and living in that state of heightened threat all the time. And that is what trauma is. It's what it's doing inside your body and mind. If you think of a trauma cycle, an event happens up here, and then you go through the event and your, your body's reacting as in unsafe, danger, all these sort of things. What happens is when that passes, your mind and body is meant to recognise that you're now out of that situation, process it, and then go down and close it, which then gives you an opportunity to move on with your life. What happens when trauma is stuck in your body? You go through the event, all the pain and frightening emotions and feelings, but your body doesn't and mind doesn't recognise that it's actually finished with. So that cycle doesn't go back up to processing it and closing it. So you become stuck in that, in that moment. So the help when you, you, you need really to move on to trauma is closing that final part of the circle and actually becoming aware that you're now safe, that there is no danger and that your mind and body can process it and let you go into your life. So that, I wanted to just clarify it because people get a bit confused what actually trauma is. So we have memories of trauma, and we also have, obviously your body's got a story to tell. We have sensory memory, sensory trauma in our body as well. So it's not all just about the mind, it's in the body. So when you're living in that state, it's the same when I was talking about living in toxic stress, your autonomic nervous system is in your body. And what it's doing, it's on, and your amygdala and your mind is on high alert, looking about all the time, Am I safe? Am I in danger? But because you're in such a heightened state and in that traumatic state, that there is, it's not looking for any safety or any calm. It's solely looking for dangers. It's on high alert. Your body is in a toxic stress state. Your adrenaline, got all these different hormones pumping through your body all the time. And it can really make you 
just feel so unwell because you feel under constant threat. And it's not even real threats, it's, it's perceived threat. So it's threats that aren't there, but your body's in and mind's in such a high state, it believes that there's threats coming from all over the place. So you're actually living with that feeling of being in constant danger. So that, that's trauma, that's what it feels like. So safety and dangers are subjective to us all. What I find fearful and dangerous will be different for like Stephen finds dangerous and fearful. I mean, Stephen might have a song that he puts on and he goes, oh, you folk, you've got to listen to this. It's really relaxing. It's fantastic. Let's put this music on. I just feel wonderful when I put it on. He switches that on and it fills me with absolute horror and terror because there's something about that music that somewhere in my mind or body links to a memory I might not even be aware of. Does that make sense? So we never really know what can trigger that feeling because what your mind forgets, your body remembers. And what I mean by that is sometimes memories can, we can have tiny little snippets of memories, but not a full picture if we've been through really difficult situations. And it's almost like our mind can take parts of the memories away because they're too painful or too hurtful for us to process at this moment. But the sensory part of your body can react because it's got a memory too. So you might actually feel, if you think about it, feel really fearful, feel really panicky in your body, but it doesn't make sense in your mind because you're thinking, why am I feeling this panic? Why am I feeling this fear? It's because your body remembers and the mind's not linking it back to a memory. Do you got any questions on that? Does it make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, because it's quite important. Put a microphone on your lapel. Yeah, do you want me to take it off? No, I'm, I'm only saying that... Is it banging it, against my jumper? You can hear there's a lot of interference from it, so I, th I think it's when you're moving... You're, it's... All right, I've removed it now. Is that better? Yeah. Right, that's good. Can you hear me okay? Mm, your audio is better with it on, actually. For God's sake, Stephen. Try not to slap yourself. <laughs> I think it's when you're being animated. Yeah, it's me all animated. I'll try my best not to. I'll sit like that and I won't move right. <laughs> right. What I want to talk about is we have three parts of our nervous system, right? You have the sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system, but it's also made up of two two parts of the dorsal and ventral vagal nerve is what we're going to cover now because that is the, the vagus nerve covers things like sleep, closeness, intimacy, connection with other people, relationships. And that, that's really important, having that connection and feeling part of the human race and bonding with people. But what it also does is, and I think it's linked quite a lot to depression, is that part is, it's a sleep and rest. So if you think that sometimes people get so frightened, you've heard of people feigning death, just freezing, it's linked to that. And if you think where the other part of your nervous system is very heightened, anxious, anger, all these things, that part of your nervous system is coming down, you lose energy and you just feel numb. And to me, that's what depression's like. People become very low energy, very numb, very, everything just feels disconnected. So I think that part of your nervous system, I'm trying not to move too much. I hope this is working. <laughs> but the sympathetic nervous system, when it's dominant, so if you have trauma, this is dominant. Or if you are living a really highly stressed life and you're living in that toxic stress area, we'll all move back and forward and a calm and rest and happy and feeling stressed, that's normal. But I'm talking about when you're stressed and anxious and angry all the time, or when you're living with trauma all the time, you're stuck with system sympathetic nervous system dominance. And you have to make changes to your life to actually come out of that. So I'm just going to read this off here, the kind of things that will happen. You have adrenal fatigue. Potentially, so you might have like chronic fatigue. You might see things like fibromyalgia coming up because you know, all these too much going on too quick. Stimulant dependence because some people have no energy, so they're turning to stimulants. Muscle weakness, 
digestive issues, headaches, blood pressure, mood swings will be up and down all over the place, energy drops, acne, skin problems, psoriasis, weight gain, because when you're in that state, you've got all these hormones going in, like cortisol and all the rest of it, losing weight is really easy. And then imagine that your hormones are all over the place. What you're doing is it raises your intake for sugar. So you eat more sugar, you get the sugar drop, you eat more sugar, so you get stuck in a loop. No energy, sugar for energy, lifting you up, dropping you down. and Your body's just all messed up all over the place. So it influences so much of your life. The vagus nerve runs from our brain, comes round your ear, down your throat, and it goes through all your major organs. It's the biggest in the whole body. It's the vagus means wandering, wandering vein in Latin. It's good everywhere. It touches every one of our major organs, looking for health. So it's involved in chronic illness, all these sort of things. You can influence it. Now, I've covered a few things here, but the list goes on and on and on. It's responsible for the regulation of all our organ functions. So you can see that it's a major, a major part of our body, and it's very much linked to stress and trauma as well. This is why it's important. Right. Yes, Stephen? You may, speak, you may speak. See, see, just in the last week or two, I've felt very stressed, and I could tick every single one of those things. Well. You need to do some vagus nerve exercises I'm going to show you in a minute. Good. And I'm going to post you my little thing through the post. And I'm going to post it to you because I won't be using it. No, I am. And every day you have to come on and show me it's on your ear. I'll have it on 24 hours a day. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, will, I will be sending it. Okay. So it helps your digestion. Such a, and it's also involved with like your sneezing, your coughing, your swallowing, all these sort of things. And that's why some of the exercises that you'll have seen if you've been on previous ones, like with, with the tapping, I was saying hum, do a bit of hum in the happy birthday. The reason for that, it vibrates that vagus nerve and it, it lifts it up. So it's, it's everything I do is linked to certain things. It's even involved in being sick. There you are. So stimulating the vagus nerve, you send a message to your body that it's time to relax and rest. And that's the important part, is time to de-stress by stimulating your vagus nerve. So that's why it's important to do introduce these exercises. It's good for your well-being, good for your resilience, helps you overcome anxieties involved in helping you move on for depression, and also helps you cope when things start to go wrong because your resilience is there. Is that all right? Okay. I'm going to talk about ways to balance this now, right? Core regulation is one of the best ways to balance your nervous system, to come out of the sympathetic nervous system. And that can be with another person or it can be with an animal, a pet. Um, and I'm talking about it can be cuddles, it can be breathing, it can be relationships, it can be that sense of connection, of caring for someone else and someone else caring for you. Touch. Everything that we do as human beings, rebalance. I mean, if anyone's listened to the previous ones, you've heard me talking about the heart-to-heart -heart hug. I don't know if you've tried that, Stephen, but the heart-to-heart -heart hug's really good. Or when you just breathe with someone. All that is co-regulation. You're doing it with another person. And you know what? Even just cuddling a pet. And I've actually said to people in the past, if they don't have another person in their life or they don't have a pet, particularly at the moment when people can feel quite isolated, you can absolutely do it. A hug with a cushion because it's the act of hugging. And close your eyes and actually allow yourself to feel that hug. And that can start to re-regulate your body as well, which in today's world is quite a good thing because not everybody does have somebody else in their life. Avoid rules and saying things to yourself like I should, like I, I should be slimmer or I should laugh more or I should go out more or I should mix with people more. Because every time you say that, you're telling yourself you're doing something wrong. You're criticising yourself. So try and remove the shoulds and try and be kinder to yourself and actually recognise the things that you're doing well rather than things that you want to really change. 
When you stimulate the vagus nerve, everybody has their own window of tolerance for this, right? You, there'll be a limit. Some of the things that they do with cold or they might do to, I'll show you in a minute, a little bit of electricity. There's different levels that, other, that everybody can tolerate. So just restore your own system, your own balance, and do what's right for you. Points to remember, though. I'm trying not to move too much. A safe place. Balancing your vagus nerves is giving yourself a safe place to rest, to recognise you are safe and that you're no danger, and use self-regulation. Now, self-regulation, I'm talking about things like, remember the breathing? Hands behind your back, breathing. Doing the wet noodle, which is giving yourself a fully relaxed body. They'll be doing the body scan, doing these exercises, but remembering to do them because knowing about them is not enough. That doesn't make the changes. It takes the effort to do them. And I always say do it 200 times a day. But the reason for that is you just want you to, every chance you get, just to remember to relax your body. It doesn't have to be exactly 200 times a day. Just relax throughout the day and keep dialing down that stress level. Because if you can stabilise your nervous system, you're going to have so much more joy in life. I mean, you really are. So some of the things that you can do at home, sing. Sing out loud when you're in the house. Just I'm a rubbish singer. I sing all the time. And I dance all the time. I can't dance either. And I would never do it in front of another human being. Well, my husband sees me, I think, enough. But I drive him crazy. He just leaves the room because I really can't sing and can't dance. But it lifts my mood. It makes me feel good. Changes my tone and my body, everything about me. When you're singing, you're vibrating that vagus nerve. You don't need to be good. Just do it. Just do what makes you feel good. Some people might do humming or chanting because that, that really works as well. Absolutely. Music is one of the most powerful vagus nerve, but while balancing your nervous system. Your ear, it's why with, I'll show you something in your ear in a minute, is a branch of the vagus nerve that is connected directly to the ear. So listening to music slows the heart, reduces anxiety. So music's a wonderful way to start making changes in your life. Um, I like really heavy metal music, <laughs> which people might not think that's very common, but for me, it absolutely does it for me. And if I ever feel stressed or anxious, I go away and I get that music until literally there's nothing else apart from boom, 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 boom. And it absolutely calms me right down. Changes my life, where it would probably drive some people crazy, but for me, it presses a button, so that's good. Massage. Massage is a wonderful way. That's a touch, getting back in touch with your vagal nerve. So if anybody here is looking for massage, I'm sure that, do you do that in the soul, man? Do you do massage or anything like that? Not at the moment, but maybe in the future. The only person that does it is me, and I don't, um, I don't do it. Do it for anybody mm -hmm. else in the right. Well, you do, you've got a head massage in the soul, man. Someone does that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's touch. Touch is really good. Movement is a vital part of your, your healthy nervous system. So moving your body, that's why I'm talking about dancing. It's really good. It releases stress. It's funny because as human beings, we unlearn movement, right? And we do. We can learn a lot from animals. If you ever watch wildlife shows and you'll see, like, I don't know, a lion chasing a gazelle or something, and the gazelle lies there pretending it's dead, right? And I maybe know a lion right enough, but it gets away. It gets away, but it's lying. And what it does when it stands back up, it really shakes itself, really shakes. And that's to get rid of all the stress and the anxiety and all that toxic. It's back in the zone and it runs away. Yeah, but what we do, though, well, and I know because when I had my stress and anxiety, Stephen, <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I can't keep a straight face when we were doing I, mean, I used to get really stressed because you start to shake when you get really nervous. I mean, my hands, my whole head would be shaking, my whole body would feel like I was tremoring. Now, that's my, na that's nature allowing me to deal with the stress. That's like that animal shaking. But what we do is, I would go really stiff to try and stop myself shaking. Thinking, oh, I can't stay. And I'd be like, ooh, try. nobody, no, not let anyone know that I'm actually doing that. 
which is the wrong thing to do because what you're actually doing then is keeping all that fear, anxiety, stress and toxic energy in your body. So it's a movement that's actually the thing to do. So we need to shake a bit more, shake it off, get rid of it. Whenever you feel stress and energy, just remove yourself and really shake your body and get rid of it instead of storing it up inside yourself. <laughs> You can just get up there and dance about like crazy shaking on your hands and legs, Steve, and that'll get the deal. I'm just... <laughs> it does help. No, crying, people think, we get told as kids stop crying. Do you know what? We cry for a reason. We've got tear ducts for a reason. It's to release that pressure. We all, if you cry, just cry. I always say that. Just let it out because it's there. It's like a release valve to get rid of what's going on inside you, without a doubt talked about pressing on walls, like moving walls, that's physical work. Anything that moves, uses every muscle up in your body is really good for you as well. We're talking about that thing that you had, the yoga stand thing. But anything that you can press on walls, press on the floor that tenses up, or even curl up your toes and squeeze your hands really tight. And if you do that, your legs and arms tense and then just release them. Because it's all about letting your muscles know that you can relax. Do your breathing exercises. I like that one. I do just because I like it. Put my hands and push my elbows back because it helps my breathing, but you can do the box breathing or the C6 breathing, whatever it is. Whatever is comfortable for you. Splash cold water on your face. Every morning, and I have done this for 30, 40 years, I run the cold tap until it's ice cold. It's colder the better. And then I just keep splashing really ice cold water on my face. And do you know what? That wakes up your vagal nerve, I'll tell you that. 30, 30 second ice cold shower. I'm not brave enough for that. But you can start off with five seconds, 10 seconds and build it up. But the ice cold water, it doesn't even feel cold to me now because I've done it for so long. And in fact, I wouldn't feel awake in the morning if I didn't do that. Or you can fill a sink up with ice cold water and dip your face in it. To stick your whole your whole face. It's very good for pulling you back if you're having an emotional moment, like when you're really like overwhelmed with emotion, is to just dip your face in ice cold water. Or if you've got like a Ziploc bag with ice cold water in it, you can just hold it against your cheeks and eyes. And what that, that'll do is that really it pulls you back and calms your emotion down and stimulates the vagal nerve. It's quite handy to know that. And it's quite good to do it. Um, or here's my little opportunity to talk about my little vagal nerve stimulator. So it doesn't look like very much, but it costs me a fortune. I'll have to take my ear. And what you do, no, <laughs> you plug it in there. And now I'll let Stephen talk. Are you okay if I share an, an image of the vagus nerve? Because I'm just looking at it. I've never actually um, looked at this before. Fair. So are you okay if I share a wee image of it? Because I, uh -huh. I think it'd be quite a good visual when you're showing them the as it connects to your ear. So I've got it on my phone here. How cool is that? Yep. To every part of your body. Good. That's why it's so important. So what I do with this, you'll see there it clicks onto that bit in my ear. And you just sit with that on for 15, 15 minutes. And what it does is it sends an electrical current through your, your vagal nerve. And it's got different strengths. So if it's too, you can turn it down if it's too strong for you or whatever. But it absolutely is fantastic. And this is just a wee advertisement here I'm doing, Stephen. That for anyone only at the Soul Man, if they come to me for auricular therapy, to get a 15 minute session with that for free. So that's just a, a free add on for anyone that books through the Soul Man. <laughs> and that's, that's good because it's actually making a difference to all your life in so many different ways. And it really is. Oh, um, wow. Well, you, you had it done, Stephen. I don't know. Honestly, you were saying as well that people don't feel it, but I feel it. Like I can feel it charging through my body. It's, but then I'm oversensitive to stuff. We know this already. <laughs> I didn't feel it. 
I could see it was working because it shows me in a little system that it was working, but I didn't feel it. What I have noticed is I've got quite a, a big bit in my ear there. And some ladies that have came to me, they've got tiny little bits and probably hardly any there at all. And it's really bad, hard to clip it on. So they've sometimes got to sit and hold it on if they've not got really a big, massive ear like I've got. <laughs> like <big> Dumbo ears. <laughs> That's the sphere that it clips to the wizard. The, the, the yeah, 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 yeah. Just that little bit that sticks out. Um, but it's really interesting, the differences that can make and the things that you can actually do at home to make yourself feel so much better. Remember, this is talking about all areas of your health helps you with getting over trauma. I'm not saying it alone moves you out of trauma, but it's giving you another support system, helps with your emotions. Mentally, emotionally, physically, look what it can help with. If you have a if you balance that part of your nervous system, helps all your organs heal, helps you put back to how you should be. There'll be other things that you have to do as well, but skin disorders as well, all these sort of things. You can also hug ice cubes. It's sensory. You can just let an ice cube melt in your hand. You can do that as well. So that's quite quite a good thing to do. Grounding exercises, anything that can take you out of that that um, toxic stress. But the singing and the dancing, breathing, splashing cold water is the best for the vagus nerve, as well as my little vagus nerve stimulator. It doesn't look like very much. You wouldn't believe how much that cost. I thought it was going to be a big, huge contraption when I paid that much money for it. And it arrived, and I was like, what? It's tiny. So, has anyone got any questions on that and how important the vagus nerve is in your body? And more importantly, what are you going to do now that you know about it? I was um, researching the vagus nerve and I was quite interested to find out that they used to do a procedure called a, vagot a vagotomy, um, where they actually <laughs> severed the vagus nerve. Um, Why? They, they used to cut it for... for many different reasons but what they found when they done that but it's now an obsolete procedure they don't do it anymore and the reason that they don't do it is because and this is fascinating um they do, do, do i'm just gonna find it so without your vagus nerve um you can i've lost it now yeah, without your vagus, they used to do it in ga gastric bypass surgery. Right. So they used to cut the vagus nerve when they were doing the gastric by bypass surgery. And what they found is that people then became completely unable to absorb vitamin B12. Um, it also caused nerve damage in the whole body, tiredness, dementia, paranoia, and ultimately death. I could see that cutting it would not be a good thing. It's coming from your brain. It's going around all your organs. Yeah. It does all these things. It deals with your mental health, emotional health, everything. Cutting it, oh my God. But they're, they're, they were cutting the part that was the, the lowest part, but still, yeah. it shows you what a vital thing it is. Well, it goes right down to your sexual organs. So if they cut it, it wouldn't be much fun. <laughs> It's part of life, right? Connection. <laughs> Told you you can't take me anywhere, Stephen. <laughs> this will be getting cut now. You know what's I know, like, we're a biological thing, but when I had the vagus stimulation, I felt it from the head right down to my sexual organs. It does, so. It does. Laughing at me, and I was like, Why am I feeling tingly? There's a physical stimulation. I would do this to a roomy people. Well, I say I'd do it to a roomy people. I'll have to explain now. <laughs> you bring your hands down the back of your head, rub the back of your neck, round your throat. So you're bringing your, on a woman, your hands down between your boobs, round your ribs, down into the middle of your stomach, and then put your hands together like that and take it out between your legs. Right, and what you're actually doing there is following the path of your vagus nerve and stimulating it. I've actually got a video of it, and that's how you manually stimulate it. It, it looks a bit sexual, it looks a bit 
But do you know what? It's quite a good fun way to do it as well. <laughs> and it actually works. And when I was training people, I used to train groups of people on anxiety and things like that and do diplomas. I actually used to train my class on how to manually do that. But I'll tell you, it was good fun when you're all standing up in the class all doing that. What a laugh we used to have too. <laughs> but you can, you can do it and it works. If anybody wants that video, I'm happy to send them the video. But it does actually, to show you the path of how you actually do it. Um, yeah. You can use energy, what's called energy medicine, which is using all the, I guess you use it in like acupuncture, reflexology, all different energy points in your body. But you can use that in a way, different ways to healing, bring it all together, which is called energy medicine. And the vagus nerve plays a huge part in that as well. I'm quite interested in energy medicine. I quite like that. I've got quite a lot of info. I was also reading, because uh, I, I love to get information on things, and I was also reading that some medicines actually stop the vagus nerve from working. The thing is with medicines is <laughs> they're all there to do a job, and they do the job. But if you look at it's inside any medicine pack, there's all side, everything's got a side effect in some way or a possible side effect. So with the good that they're doing, there's always something that potentially they could be doing on the other side. You just got to weigh it up. But medicines, and I'm always a big believer that medication has its place and can be really, really helpful for people to get them through whatever they need to get through. So uh, if I, I don't know about switching off vagus nerves or what it does, but I'm sure that if any, you're taking a medicine that has a side effect which isn't doing you any good and is making you feel worse, then you need to go back and speak to your doctor and say, you know, this is what's happening. Because the doctor would never know that you were having that side effect unless you actually spoke about it. I think that's important. It is important because, like, Obviously, I'm not saying that me Western medicine should ever be the place. No, no, I know that. I know you don't think like that. But I know. there is lots and lots of studies that are going into um, certain types of medicines that dull down receptors and all that mm -hmm. pain and everything. And what they're saying is that um, our body and our immune system has the power to fix anything. Our, bo our body is self-healing. Our cells, our cells regenerate. We're, we're, we're actually a self-healing organ. Yeah. Right. And there's no doubt, I have no doubt about that at all. Um, it, but we've got to treat it right. We've got to manage it right to allow it to be self-healing. Because it can't heal if we're in that toxic area all the time. So that's really important. I mean, the, the pain, what happens with physical pain is although we're feeling physical pain in our body, right? The pain signal comes from the brain. So the brain sends out the signal, but we're actually, we're actually feeling it in the body, right? And what happens with chronic pain, so that's chronic pain that's over three months, really that pain signal, that warning, isn't really needed. So there's nobody that should have severe chronic pain really after three months because then it's just that the, the brain's in that habit of continually sending that pain signal out. Because it, the pain signal's a warning. If you've got any kind of condition longer than three months, you know you've got that condition. So if that's an acceptance of it where the, you don't need the constant high level pain, you can actually turn pain down by um, communicating with your mind. I'm talking about hypnotherapy here because I, I used to do hypnotherapy a lot or NLP practices, they let the mind realise that, yes, you might still have a little discomfort, but you don't need to pain. And you can actually turn pain levels down, really reduce it, actually, through, through different methods, by allowing the mind to, to process that that warning, that pain warning, isn't allowed anymore. I don't know if I'm making sense here, but that's what it is. So you can turn pain level down, that's basically what I'm saying. For chronic pain, for pain that's been longer than three months. That's quite interesting, because that shows you how, how much the mind actually works. But the mind likes habit, it gets into the habit of doing things. And sometimes it just forgets to stop sending that pain. 
Now, a lot of people go to the hospital and I've seen people coming to me and saying they've been to the, like, pain clinics and the doctors are saying, well, you know, you're actually all healed now. There's nothing actually wrong with you. So there's no physical reason why you should still have that pain. And what it is, is it just, it's just the mind keeps sending the, the signals. It's quite interesting. The mind is amazing. It's almost wonderful. But God, would you ever learn everything about it? I think it's impossible. It's a really fascinating thing, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. It is. Every, all these neural pathways and the ways we learn and the way how we actually fire up our own memories and we actually feed our own fears and all different stuff. I think the vagus nerve is probably one of the most fascinating things I've ever read about, though. It's really interesting. It's really good. Uh, if you look up the ANS, which is the autonomic nervous system and the vagus nerve, this is where it all sort of ties in together. And I don't know if you've ever seen any photographs. You sometimes see them on Facebook. And it's like a brain and it's like the big nervous system all yeah. The full, have you seen it? The one I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, the vagus nerve's in there. And that, that picture, like the spidery nervous system, is what does all your emotions and all your stress and all your peace and calm. And that's why we need to look after it. I kind of like, um, you know how people say that your heart is the battery for your body? I actually think that the, the, the vagus nerve is more like the battery for your body. Mm. The more I've done and the more I've looked at it, it it's responsible for loads of stuff. Hmm. I guess they're both really important because we couldn't survive without a heart. We couldn't really survive without our nervous system either. Eh? So they're a team. They're a good team. <laughs> That's what it is. When people look at their, you know, like lots of people are really good at looking at their heart health or their... Hmm. The physical health in their body. Imagine if everybody really paid attention to the vagus nerve and to their nervous system, how different things could be for people. Science is really moving towards that now. In the last few years, um, there's been a lot of, a lot of training coming out um, and a lot of work that's becoming more and more high profile about just how important the nervous system and the vagal nerve is. Um, certainly in, when I'm looking for training and a training that I'm doing, it, it, it's, it's never missed. It's always pushed to the importance and how, the, how important it is to talk about this, how to learn more about it and how it influences everything really. Uh, um, my wife, as you know, she's um, at uni just now and she's in her first year of um, studying nursing. And um, she, right now they are on the section of well, they've just finished their first trimester, but she was on the, the, the topic of the nervous system and how it works in the body. So I've been reading her books as well. <laughs> <laughs> they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fascinating, totally, mm -hmm. totally fascinating. Now, when I first started doing this, the first thing that I really started, well, I'd done other training, but the first thing with clients, I was really working with hypnotherapy. Um, and I very, I mean, I still am a hypnotherapist, but I rarely use it because learning all about the nervous system and more things about the mind, it just led me down a different path how I want to work. It was like, it was like a kid in a sweetie shop thinking, oh my God, I just need more of this. It really is. It's addictive eh, when you start looking at mm. it. It just changed the whole way that I work, really. And how I believe that people can actually make changes in their life. And it really it fired up the importance of how people can do it themselves. And it made me realise that I'm here to show people, to share with people, if you like, teach people how to do it. But I, I'll say this to everybody. Everybody has the power within themselves. I don't make any changes for anyone. And I really mean this because... I, and I know that people talk about healers, right? I am not a healer. And I actually get quite defensive. Don't call me a healer, right? I know, I can't help it. I'm not. I'm not, Stephen. Well, the way I look on myself is, no, I'm a teacher. <laughs> I teach people how to heal themselves. That's what I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I teach people to heal themselves. That they have all that magic. They have all that power inside them. And for every single person who's listening to this, if anybody ever watches it, you're the powerful one. 
you can do it all. You just need to show someone to show you how to tap into it. And that is the truth. There, I've saved my bit. <laughs> I'm a helping hand. <laughs> I'm just a helping hand. I like that. Okay. Uh, when we go back to just, I want to just touch on other things that can help with trauma. And I'm not necessarily talking about people coming to me. I'm just letting them know what other kind of therapies are out there. Although I do them all, but that's not, I'm not here just to do that. We've got the board. We've talked about the board which is a sound system, if you like, that you listen to, that changes the neural pathways and habits in your mind. And it sort of disrupts that. Um, you can have CBT, which is more of a talking and learning therapy, a doing therapy, which can take several months. Some people, counselling can go for years. It just depends what you're actually going for. I like energy therapies like EFT, TFT, which is tapping. There's acupressure. Acupressure points are very good. There's one on the wrist, just underneath the thumb. And if you just press on it lightly, not if you're pregnant, but press on it lightly, just for a couple of minutes, it's like a courage point for when you're feeling a bit nervous or anxious about something. This is a point where it can increase courage just after pressing on that. So there's lots of little points. I've got loads of stuff on things like that as well. You can do EMDR, which can be the eye movement therapy or bilateral stimulations. I mean, I don't know if you've seen my kids' video that I use maracas with kids and stamping their feet and all different stuff like that. It's NLP-based techniques, mindfulness. And I've got a little thing I do called the swan. Oh, you'd love the swan. One's amazing. I, I've done it with my um, mediumship group, and honestly, so you've seen this what the hand moving. Yeah, yeah. Kids love that because what I'll say to them is, I'm going to show you how much your mind loves you and listens to you. So I just say that I'm going to talk to your unconscious mind, and it's going to take control of your hand. It's going to turn your hand to your face. I don't want you moving it. Just let it do it. And we'll show you how much your mind loves you. And then their hand starts turning. And then I've actually said to it, and now I'm going to ask your hand to wave to you. And it starts to <laughs> And they're like, ah! And I'll say, well, you'll never doubt how much your mind listens to you now, will you? And it's really good. But Susan, is it your mind that you're speaking to, or is it your soul? Well, I say it's your unconscious mind. The, the part of your the part of your mind that makes your hair grow and your heart beat, that makes your lungs breathe and that loves you and wants to protect you. It's your soul. Well, isn't that part of your soul? Because is your soul not the you that's inside your body? Well, you are your soul. The body is just the Bible. Yeah, so therefore it is your soul because your unconscious must be part of your soul because it's part of you. <laughs> <laughs> there we've agreed. <laughs> So it's quite a lot of different things you can do. So if anybody's finding themselves feeling stuck or have a look about, speak to different people who do different kinds of therapies. The important thing to do is find the person that is right for you. Because you could have four people that do, I don't know, just say, what do I do? The kind of anxiety sessions that I do. Just say you had four people that do that. You need to find the person with the personality that fits you that you feel that you can relax with them and feel comfortable. So it's not really the thing that, yes, the method has an importance, but the greatest importance is the relationship you have with the person who's working with you. Where someone could come to me and find that, think that I'm not right for them, and you know what, that's absolutely fine, because you need to find the person that's right for you. Because you actually need that, I guess it's a co-regulation, that relationship with someone, someone to be in that zone with you that you feel understood and you believe that we can help you. If that person's not doing that for you, you're with the wrong set. The, the, that therapist just not right for you, and you need to go and find somebody else. So I always say shop around, find somebody that's right for you. But I'm pretty good. <laughs> Anyone got any questions? <laughs> You can ask away, Stephen. Ask a question. Um, 
I did have it here and I can't find it now. Uh, as long as it's not a tricky one. It is. <laughs> you ask me anything. I've got loads of notes here and I wrote it down and I can't kind of see it now. Yeah, so see when we are, because I know that we've done like a, a, a good bit of stuff over the last few weeks and it's not to do with the Vegas system or the Vegas nerve or anything like that. This is to do more with, um, remember when we were speaking about children and how we can take them out of that meltdown period. Um, well, the best way to do it is just by keep being safe and calm yourself, making sure they're safe and staying calm, yeah. being regulated yourself. What, what I've done, and I just want to give you a bit of feedback, and anybody else who's had um, or who's been watching, is my two little boys. So Noah can be a little bit crazy, but Theo can also follow the same behaviour because he's seen his brother acting like that. Mm -hmm. So this morning we had a huge big episode with Theo interestingly Noah's been great but with Theo he started to like act out a little bit so this morning he was really stressed about cereal right because he wanted a particular kind of cereal <laughs> excuse me so instead of <coughs> saying to Theo you're just going to have that cereal and that's it I said to him do your fingers Theo just do this for me really slowly just imagine that you've got glue in between your fingers and it completely brought them down that's good honestly see the difference it's making to my children it's just night and day different it's that's one of my favorite ones because when i'm showing people how to do that i always feel it working on myself even though i feel i'm quite calm and relaxed as soon as i start doing that i can feel myself so I'm not as calm and relaxed as I think I am because I can actually feel it working. Mm -hmm. Listen, um, I've been using the butterfly hug on right. my son and to be honest, I thought the first time I did it, he was just going to wriggle away and tell me to go away. But he loves it. He'll sit there for ages and let me do it. It's really, that's great. really good, yeah. So thanks for that. Oh, that's brilliant. I love the butterfly hug as well, actually. It's nice. <laughs> it is. I said we know and he told me to fuck off. <laughs> to be fair, I thought Edward was going to do that, so I was really <laughs> surprised. I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> it's finding what's right and what works, eh? Because everybody's different. Yeah. My grandson wouldn't let me do the butterfly hug to him. He would just push me away. But he would just run away. I did try it, you know. I was like, "No, come here, come and come and try this with Dad." And I, was, I started doing it, and you know, excuse my French, but he did. He went, ah! "Like, okay." So we won't be doing that then. <laughs> so, yeah, I think fingers, is, fingers is an easy one for them, though, eh? Yeah. But you can get them to do, or the, I don't know, do you know, the, like the beanbag thing, throwing it back and forward, the bilateral stimulation, that's quite a good one as well. Yeah. I think it, yes. all of the hints and the tips that you have given for us personally over the last three weeks, most certainly for my children, has helped massively you know hugely things like you know at dinner time instead of them melting down you know because it usually meal times my kids get really annoyed and don't want to eat all their dinner and i'm like right guys come on fingers squeeze your fingers um let's get you out of the the kitchen for a second and and floppy noodle you know like simple things and it's just taking them out of that meltdown and and uh their own self again is really making a difference. The thing to remember is, is the more you do it, even if it doesn't work sometimes, the more you do it, the easier and more effective it becomes. Because there's always situations that things don't work, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that that's it stopped and it won't work another time. You've just got to keep trying things. Um, that's good to Stephen. I was actually speaking to Noah's teacher, um, well, the head teacher, and I said to her, See when no one's having a bit of a meltdown at school, would you be able to try something for me? And she was like, Of course, anything to help Noah. Um, so we spoke about the, the fingers and she said, What a difference. It's helping them to focus in class. So she's going to speak to the staff because obviously we have a wee team meeting and whatever, and she's going to yeah. 
staff and make sure that all of the, the people who are caring for Noah are making sure that they're doing things that are very simple. Yeah. I like all the exercises to be really simple and easy because if anything's complicated, people won't do it anyway. Yeah. They've got to be really easy. And things that you can practically do anywhere. In turn as well, by doing all these things, um, Noah's in a calmer place and we've actually created this rota system where, you know, like he'll move up on the chart if he does good things, starts his day trying his best. So he has that at school, then has it at home with us. Same thing, but on a different rota. Eight o'clock to nine o'clock, it's relaxing music and bedtime stories. But he can listen to any music he wants. Well, I'm thinking that he, he is already stimulating the, the vagus nerve. Um, his favourite band are the Gorillas. So yeah, maybe you said that. Eight o'clock, it's like, it's bad. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> no, well, all that's good for him, though, because you're absolutely right. That is what he's doing. He's stimulating that vagus nerve. And look at the benefits for doing that. It's unbelievable. So does the vagus nerve have any benefits with sleep as well? Yes, because if it, if well, your auto, autonomic nervous system, which the vagus nerve is a major part of, if you've got that balanced, your rest and digest is activated correctly, so it improves rest and sleep. Yeah, it does. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Because he's definitely sleeping better. He's yeah. We had a, a bit of a, an issue where I'm not sleeping for a few days, but now he's settled and he's sleeping better. And I think it's to do with the music. Yeah, yeah, it will. It will. If you're, if he's doing that and he's stimulating his vagus nerve, it definitely improves sleep. It's fascinating the way to think yeah. that something as simple as music yeah. um, can, can really change stuff. Yeah. Nice. Now we've run out of things to talk about and it's 29 minutes past, which is good. <laughs> um, so yeah, anybody else got anything that they want to talk to Susan about very quickly in the last 60 seconds? I hope you'll try some of these exercises that I've mentioned because they'll make a difference. They do work. They work really well. Stephen, send me a private message or address because I'm going to send you this. Are you actually? I won't be I won't be using it until I'm back in the Soul Man shop. That's good. So instead, I'll just, of... I'll just post it to you. Is there a Christmas card you're getting alone in my <laughs> <Vegas stimulator. laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no. I'll be, I'll be like lit up like the Christmas tree. No, oh, I will. I will. I'll definitely send it over to you because it'll just be lying in a drawer. I'm coming over to yours, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I only lives like maybe. Five or six seconds away from me. All right, well, there you are. I could actually do this and shout on her and she'd be. Well, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, Susan. I have right. Thank you so, so, so much for taking the time. You know, that's six hours over the last three weeks that we've spent, um, you know, talking about ways to cope and ways to, to get through things, not just during lockdown, but in life. Yeah. You know, I think all of these tools that you've given people are really going to help them to be able to make some really positive changes forever. Um, but it, it's changing your way of life, really, introducing things into your life that will have long and lasting effects. Yeah. Remember, living with toxic stress, if you live a life that's stuck in toxic stress, potentially you can really. Reduce your life by approximately 20 years. That's what studies say. So by changing this and bringing yourself out of toxic stress and really just doing tiny little things to, to take care of yourself, you're going to a healthier and longer life. That is what you, Susan, you're, 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 you're not about like, come and work for me for a year. You're like, right, we need to get you sorted as quickly as possible. Rather than spending lots and lots and lots of time with people, you want to give people... Because I'm a teacher, Stephen. I teach people how to do it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Susan. I know right. a client coming yeah. in a few minutes, so I'll let you go, but 
thank you so much from all of us here at the Zoman and Friends for all your time um, that you've given freely to help. Everybody. It's been good fun, though, eh? I've enjoyed it. <laughs> well, just continue our chats every Friday morning. Yeah. We'll you FaceTime each Friday morning. <laughs> it's brightened my days, that's for sure. But anyway, thank you. I better go because I've got this client coming. But thank you very much. Bye-bye just now. Bye. Bye. Bye.